they all said, yeah, I can lose weight on a diet. I've been doing it for decades. You know, I've lost a ton on a diet if you count up through the various different diets, but they always put it back on and more. You know, you'd have hundreds of people saying almost identical things. I think it's in my genes. I think it's like because I'm from a family that lived with obesity. I think my metabolism's low. I compare what I eat to my flatmates. My flatmate eats twice as much as me, but, you know, they have no problem. So all of these, you know, comments really stimulated my interest in, you know, weight regulation and metabolism and thinking, you know, actually, maybe our understanding of weight regulation is flawed and these people actually are correct. But they're not making it up. That is their experience, you know. There was no collusion between them. So this is when I got really, really interested in the causes of, uh, of why people struggle so much with losing weight through diets. And I came across a lecture where the weight set point was mentioned. This was many years ago, maybe 20 years ago. This idea that every individual has got their own weight setting where the part of the brain that controls our appetite and the metabolism and basically our weight, the hypothalamus, will try and fix your weight at that particular point. Now, that's good if your individual weight set point is in a healthy level, but actually if it's been set at an overweight or an obese level, it's a real problem because your brain's going to defend that set point. You know, So you can lose 20 pounds, 5 kilograms, whatever, on a diet, but you're going to put it back on because these subconscious urges that are driving us were almost like automatums. You know, not much of it is conscious. We can try and override it, but the hypothalamus is going to win in the end. It's like breathing. You can hold your breath for a while, but you're never going to be able to stop breathing. And Andrew, can you help me to understand this a little bit more? So you're saying there's a part of my brain that sort of knows what weight I should be, Mm -hmm. but you're saying if I go below this number, then suddenly your body is saying, oh, your, your weight's too low, you need to eat more food? So yeah, I mean, your weight set point will change in response to your environment. So basically your weight set point, and you know, everyone will understand this because everyone sort of knows what their weight set point is. They may be going to the gym and they may be dieting constantly, but they know that when they just eat normal food, they're going to be whatever weight, you know, uh, and that they're trying to manipulate their weight with a conscious effort to a different one, okay? And the weight set point is uh, you know, calculated by the hypothalamus via a number of things. One of the main ones is genetics, which you can't change, and your epigenetics, which you can't change. But then there are aspects that you can change. And really, if you understand how your own weight set point is calculated by your brain, you can change the factors that it's looking at, and your weight set point will come down, and your weight will come down, and you'll lose weight seamlessly. And those factors that are external and we can change include mainly the diet, but also things like stress, sleep, and a little bit exercise. But diet is the most important thing. And going back to this calorie thing, it's not the calories in the food, it's the food in the calories that are important. It's what the food does to you metabolically. So you're saying that there's part of my brain, the hypothalamus, Mm -hmm. that basically knows what my weight should be so it's calculating what weight it thinks you should be taking into account all the data either genetically from your ancestors or your current sort of external environment it's taking all of that data in and it's saying okay we want a weight setting maybe in a normal range but it may be overweight and so how does it change um, what's going on in our body if we end up going either below or above that setting So, I mean, you're going to go into a metabolic response. It's not just if you starve yourself. It's actually also if you overeat. Your your brain is going to stop you, you know, increasing too much weight too fast. And you can sort of imagine it a little bit like a a weight anchor. Okay, so you've got this, you're you're anchored in a harbour and your ship's just there. It's hovering, you know, up and down around that anchor, five, ten pounds here and there over the years. Now, if you try and think, okay, I want to get to the healthy, shallow water, and you're going to drive your engines, you're going to go to the gym, you're going to starve yourself. You can imagine the anchor, the rope on the anchor being an elasticated rope. You're going to push the engine, you're going to really go for it. You're going to get almost towards the shallow water, the the slim water. But the more you try, the stronger the pull back, you know, from that elasticated rope. That's exactly what happens when your weight set point is at the unhealthy angle. You could reach it, you know, but it's a major struggle. It's almost like a light, you you can't do a full-time job and, you know, be able to do that. 
And eventually you'll give up because you'll feel terrible. You'll be absolutely starving, which is one of the responses of the brain. Starvation, food-seeking behavior, being really, really irritable and not enjoying life. Thinking about food all the time, that's one response. And the other response is this low metabolism, feeling very, very listless and not wanting to do anything. And, you know, your basal metabolism, which we'll talk about because that's, this is a very important part of the, the understanding of weight regulation, will collapse. Eventually, you'll give up. But the less scared your rope, we're going to pull you all the way back to the, the waters you were in normally and probably a little bit further up the, uh, the obesity waters. And that last bit is often after you finish this cycle of calorie control weight loss and eventually get so starving that you have to eat that you often end up slightly heavier than when you started? Yeah. I mean, this is what so many patients tell me. I can go on a diet. I can really, really push it. I can go down and do light to life, whatever. But then I put the weight back on and more. They all say and more, two, three pounds more. And when you look at it from a probably an evolutionary standpoint, you know, the brain can't differentiate between a low calorie diet that you've consciously gone on and a famine in the food environment, you know, from our ancestral times. So it's thinking, well, hang on, we've just been through a famine, a low calorie diet for three, four months. We need a little bit more insurance this time. A human body on average will carry about 60 days worth of energy within it usually in the form of fat, a little bit in the liver, you know. If you've been sort of manipulating your diet to such an extent where, um, you know, you're starving yourself for periods of time, your hypothalamus is going to pick up on that and it's going to want that insurance that, you know, if there is another perceived harsh winter, we need not 60 days of energy, we need 90 days, you know. Maybe we need 120 days, you know. And so recurrent low-calorie dieting is detrimental. At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.